Hi, this is Nancy from Bayer's Pampered Stamper, and I'd like to talk to you today about a new product. It's called Matte Chalk Polish, and it is a water-based polish with a really creamy, mousse-like interior um, consistency, and it dries quickly and leaves kind of a matte finish to it. Melissa has five colors in right now. She has this lavender, pale lavender. She has the beautiful pink, it's um, ballet slippers, and a blue, a green, and a yellow. The yellow one I'll be using so I don't have the cap on. She's had this kind of container in before, but it had glitter in it. But I just want to show you that you need to just press on it and the sponge applicator comes right out. Now these have been washed after I used it. To put it back in, you just listen for the click. So it's they're really easy to open. You just have to know the trick. When you um, are done using these, you do need to open them, or excuse me, um, wash the sponge, let it dry, and then go ahead and work with them. I would like to show you um, some sheets that I've been using because this paste is water soluble you can mix it with other things so I'm not sure if you can clearly see this using the same color it's the new um, Kitsch uh, Flamingo from Ranger I put oxide ink directly to paper using um, the little pink and main brush I used the smaller one though for this area and then on this side I used just distressed ink and then I used the yellow matte chalk polish on top in a stencil. I'm not sure how clear you can see that. So the stencil I used was a Gina K stencil. I'm going to be using it again in the demo. And then I tried the matte polish through an, um, a die cut, a, a die, oh, a steel die. And um, it does not work. It, it, it works a lot better when um, the stencil or the shape that you want to color is um, closer to the paper. But I just thought I'd show that to you. And this one I used um, a Hero Arts stencil that Melissa had and did basically a direct paper, taped it down, and um, used a multiple of colors. And I think that's going to be a pretty background for a card. Then I had fun playing with some dyes that Melissa has. So this is one of them, the Dare to be Artsy die. Um, I really en enjoyed this one because I like bees and things and um, hexagons. So I cut this one. But it's not green paper. It is um, the green matte chalk polish on the base. And then I just use the um, dye. Put some matte chalk on the yellow and the blue kind of turned a little blue green. Used um, an old stamp pendus, one of those little sets that she has in the back. And um, this part is left from another die that I used, um, this LDRS Creative, this die. Some of the centerpieces I used here just to add some dimension. So, um, you know, I thought that would be kind of fun. I didn't do big elaborate examples. This one using um, this steel die. I put direct to paper behind, just arbitrarily on the paper and then did a black so it would pop through. And this comes from this dot, another um, set that I was playing with for this demo. So I thought you would enjoy that. I played with some ideas. This is a direct to paper with the matte polish. But then I stamped it with an ink that did not make a clear mark. Um, this is one of the new stamps Melissa has in from Woodware. I thought it was really cute. It has all sorts of cute little sayings with it. But I could not get a clean black ink line there on top of this. So 
the next time I did it, I used um, a Stazon ink and I got a much better print than on this one. And because this is a water-based product, I used Copic alcohols um, to color it. And because I had color underneath, the, it's not nearly as vivid, but it, it was interesting to try. And I'm really loving these, these dyes um, for the longer cards. I don't know if you've played with them yet. I cut a piece that's eight by nine, and then this is like basically a four by nine piece or a little shorter than that. It's kind of fun. So I do want to do a stencil with you. So I'm using the Gina K stencil. I just kind of center it here. I don't know that it really matters. It doesn't matter if it's straight, but I did learn that normally when I do something like this, I do a circular motion, but it'll tear up the sponge if you're not really careful. So I'm going to use various colors on this. See what that, that inside looks very moose-like. Um, I'm not sure you can really see it real clear, but if I jiggle it, you can maybe see it move a little. When you use this, you're going to take the edge of the sponge and rub on the edge. So you're making a little ditch in it, and you shouldn't see big plots of thick ink on it. So I would suggest if you're doing a stencil or you're going to try to do, do it through a steel die, pounce rather than do the circular because otherwise you'll wear out your sponge. Or you could take some of this ink or mousse and put it with a palette and then put it on with a palette knife. That would be another way you could do it. So I want to use a variety of colors. So I'm just going to make sure I got that part done. I'm going to use some green and pink with it today. I'm not in love with the lighter violet, um, but it has its purpose uh, for applique. But um, it's not as violet as I would have liked. And, you know, I helped Melissa pick out the colors. So if it's not good, it's kind of my fault because we picked out kind of light spring-like colors so that we would um, be able to do some Easter-like things. So just pounce, or once again, you could use a brush, one of those um, wonderful brushes that she has. It's up to you. I'm going to do pink, pop it off. Now, I'm not putting the um, sponges back inside. I don't know if you can see this good now. This, I really, it's very, very easy to use. The um, sponge stays really soft after you've cleaned it. You just have to wash it with soap and water, or just water, if that's what you would prefer. So I'll put this away. And I think this is an awesome background for something if you were gonna work with that. And my sponge for the pink was a little wet because um, I just had washed it out. So um, I just think it's really pretty. It's an easy stencil to use. I'll set that in the back. And then I made, oh, should have gotten this out ahead of time. You need a little wet one or a paper towel because I like to keep my work surfaces clean when I'm working. So I'm going to do this Easter card. On this one, I stamped with ink first and then put the um, matte chalk on top, and I don't like it. This is the violet. It washes out the black color. So on the ones I'm doing now, I used Copic markers for that. This is the set I'm talking about. So on one of the cards earlier, you saw this flower. And I just thought these were really fun. Going with the theme of the longer card, and I got this at Melissa's, and I can't remember what kind it is. Um, well, I mean, what brand. So you'll just have to look for it. But it's a three panel. So I'm going to use a yellow card. I'm going to do direct to paper with this because it's so easy. Then I made some smaller circles. I already put 
pink, blue, and green on it. So I think I'm going to do this on a yellow. And I have the sponge right here. Set this aside. So you just dip the edge in. I am working on um, a Teflon pad here because I didn't want to get ink all over. It become, The more you put on, the richer it'll look. So I never put uh, too much of the chalk ink on until I'm kind of empty. And, and it, it goes for a long way. I'll have these little pots. I did buy them. And I'll have these pots for quite a while, I'm sure. I don't want to leave fingerprints on it, but you could. So this is going to be like a yellow on yellow background. As you can tell, it's not hard to do. And it has this beautiful, luxurious look to it. So this is not quite dry. It'll be dry in a second or two. It takes almost no time. I'll close the pot. Keep the pots closed as much as possible. It might seem inconvenient to open and close them, but it's really not. So I'm going to simply tape this on. Let me turn it over. Get a little tape. And it's totally dry now. I just thought I'd Oh, and I have a lucky hair here. Well, you'll get to play with My cat, I had to lock out of the room today because she would be up here helping. There, that hair's gone now. And so I am just simply going to tape these. And I could pop them up, I suppose. But I kind of thought I'd pop up the center ones. Quick and simple card. I love these backgrounds, these um, pieces. And so I guess I will pull out the pop-up. So it look, looks much better using the ink last rather than first. So you get a clearer picture. So I think I'll start with the Happy Easter. I don't know that it may, well, I don't know that it really matters. Center that. That chicken I'll put in the middle. I stuck a little wink of Stella on the chick because I wanted it to, I don't know, stand out just a little. Put that on the green. And there was no, no rhyme nor reason of how I picked what was going anywhere. So once again, you make you can use these things with any of your inks. Between Distress Ink and the Oxide, I thought the Oxide had a consistency very similar to the matte chalk polish, and it worked, I think, a whole lot better than just the plain Distressed. So if I were playing with multiple ones, I would play with the Oxide as opposed to the um, regular Distressed. Now, because this is all water-based, I could spritz it now and get a little watermark in it. There's a lot of things you can do. When you think about this chalk paste as a water-based piece that will add another dimension to your cards. Um, and it can go right on top of any of the water-based inks, but the, they complement the oxide inks a lot better. So I'm not gonna put my lids back in because I wanna wash them, but remember, pop them off, and when you're putting, the, this is the violet, when you put it back in, listen to the click to make sure, but don't close it until your sponges are dry. So I hope you enjoyed this um, small demo. I used a lot of the new product that Melissa has in, and I love 
this matte chalk polish. It is one of my favorite things that I'll be using a lot now. Have a good stamping day.